Hey everybody, it's Dr. William Clark here for Leadership Conversations. This is the show where we talk about leadership according to the world that matters to you. I'm excited to be back with you in the saddle and we are literally in the last day of the year and we've been talking about the past couple of months. How are you going to finish the year strong? And I know that many of you have been working towards that, figuring out how to finish the year strong, how to make sure that you are positioning yourself and positioning um, people around you, your businesses, your teams, your organizations to finish the year strong with you. And I hope that uh, this year was indeed prosperous. And if you feel like it wasn't prosperous, let me challenge you. What we've been talking about uh, over the past handful of uh, podcasts is looking at every closed door, every opportunity lost, every no, every rejection as part of the process of getting you in position to be where you need to be. Now, everything that we felt like uh, needed to happen for us in terms of opportunity, open doors, yeses, contracts, affirmations, hirings, uh, promotions, expansion in business, etc., may not have been what we needed, right? And this ties back into what your belief system is about business, about faith, etc. But there is a reality that we all have to deal with, and that is we're not going to get 100% of everything we believe we're going to get in any given 12-month cycle or any cycle for that matter. And so when you get rejected, what is your response? How do you react to that? And so 2019 should be no different. This should be a year where you say to yourself, I am going to move forward with what I know has been successful because it looks like everything that has been successful, everything that has progressed, everything that has moved forward certainly has been affirmed by its ability to sustain in 2019. The things that weren't meant for me, the things that were not meant for my business, the things that were not meant for my team, they fell to the wayside or it was rejected or it was not accepted or whatever the case may be. And so, you know, I pray and I hope that this year uh, you find it or found it to be productive and useful even with you not getting everything you wanted. But I encourage you to look at what did you get? What did you accomplish? What was enabled to you? What was given to you to achieve and succeed? And so that's that. 2019 is literally behind us. And I want to just simply come on and talk about or at least ask you, how are you celebrating uh, the new year? How are you celebrating what just happened in 2019 and how are you bringing in the new year? I know for me personally, you know, a lot of the, the past couple of months has been a focus on uh, everything I've been teaching you, right? How to appreciate everything that has gone right, things that have gone my way, and even things that didn't go my way that were pleasant surprises. Uh, I've been learning to certainly appreciate them more deeply, <clears throat> And to uh, make that a part of my daily thought process in terms of how I approach the new day and how I approach uh, a new beginning uh, of a new day or a new week. And everything that I believe uh, was that didn't go the way I wanted to, it, it really took some time, but it really was helpful for me to evaluate, well, why didn't it go my way? And was it for a good reason? And did it turn out for my good anyway at the end of the day? And I can report with confidence, with hope and expectation that, quite frankly, the things that didn't go my way didn't turn out uh, the way I wanted to, but it still worked in my favor. It still turned out for my good. And, you know, scripture teaching teaches us that um, that was uh, that's a powerful statement to make, that even though you meant something for my bad, for my evil, <clears throat> It still turned out for my good, and the no was meant to hurt me. The the rejection was meant to hurt me. The the closed door was meant to hurt me. Uh, the lost opportunity was meant to hurt me. And and if you're honest, if I'm honest, those moments, those feelings in the moment, they feel like um, <laughs> it, it hurts. Well, you don't get what you want. But when you really do an assessment, and, and certainly this is something that I've walked through, and I'm so thankful that I was able to get through this. But I did an assessment and I looked at what was done for me, what did happen to me after I got a no. It caused me to focus even more. And I think that, uh, you know, that's something to be thankful for and appreciative of, to be to, to, to be focused even more, to have all other distractions that you thought were available to you and were aligned with your vision and purpose, to have those things kind of removed from you. That's a blessing. That That is something to celebrate. And because things were removed from me, because my focus was uh, re, refocused or realigned with where I was going in 2019, I have now learned and I'm going into 2020 knowing what is not meant for me, 
what is not meant for me to accomplish, what is not meant for me to do, what is not meant for me uh, to get done, and what is not meant for me to include in my new year, in my new decade. Those things are equally important to what was accomplished, what was affirmed, what was noted in 2019. And so to that, to answer the other question, what am I doing to celebrate the new year? Well, obviously, I'm here podcasting with you, which is always fun, and we're going to do more of that in 2020. Uh, but tonight, uh, as I wrap up this podcast and as I um, get ready to celebrate 2020, I'm going to be at my church. I'm going to do what I do best, and that is go to church and pastor and preach and teach. And I'm also facilitating a vision board party. You're welcome to join us at 75 Charter Oak Avenue in the city of Hartford, Building 1, where we're going to be doing a vision board party at 8 a.m., 8 p.m., rather, uh, where we're going to plan out our new year. And as we go through the planning process, yes, it is a traditional vision board party, uh, but there is a twist to it. The the twist is, number one, uh, I'll be there, and I hope you meet me there. But then number two, there's going to be guided faith affirmations that are going to be associated with every step of the process. As a pastor and as a teacher and as someone who uh, focuses on spirituality as one of my key professions and what I do best, uh, it is always a part of me to look at what, how does spirituality, how does faith influence our planning? How does it influence our strategy? How does it influence how we view the world? And I'm going to be guiding everyone that's present through that process, not only think about the future, but to understand how faith plays a role into it. And just to give you a snippet of it, these are what I'm about to share with you are, are common known scriptures to people that, that go to church and read scripture. There are two things that come to my mind. Number one, uh, the scripture says that uh, if you don't write the vision down, uh, you're not going to be able to make it plain. And, and the, port- the importance of writing the scripture down, the importance of uh, making sure that it is documented. It is so that you can watch it come to pass. It will not tarry, right? It will not last long. But if you don't have your vision written down, if you don't have your for, your tomorrow forecasted, <clears throat> or you don't have uh, your tomorrow outlined, it's always going to seem like your goals are far, far away. Write the vision down, make it plain, and it will come to pass. Watch it come to pass, right? The second thing uh, that that uh, we welcome folks through is without a vision, you certainly will perish. Uh, and, and part of the thinking behind that particular scripture is when you lack a vision, you're easily distracted by new things, new shiny things, new shiny steps, new shiny businesses, new shiny careers, new shiny promotions, new shiny this and that. And you lose sight of what you are purposed to do for this season. And if you're not careful, you will find yourself chasing after things because of jealousy or you've been tempted or you've been uh, pulled away from the purposes that have been destined for you. And it's important to understand that your focus in 2020 cannot be distracted by shiny new things. So you're going to have to write the vision down and make it super simple. And then you got to understand that this vision is written down for you so that you are not distracted. You're not you don't perish by chasing <clears throat> by chasing all types of things that, uh, quite frankly, are not meant for you. And so I'm going to be going in deep into those type of teachings and well beyond that uh, tonight at 8 p.m. Join us at 8 p.m. Uh, so that you can be a part of what we're doing and what we're experiencing at Living Faith Church. That's how I'm going to bring in my new year, planning for 2020. Quite frankly, I got my plans already set. I got my vision already set. I got my goals already set. And, and part of it is because I've been able to focus on what uh, what went right and what was taken away. And my energy is focused on a singular thought of mine. Join me at two places, drwilliampclark.com and my six-figure funding. Join us there. Join our website webinar in 2020. I can't wait to share concepts with you about how to raise money for your nonprofit. This is Dr. William Clark, Felicia Conversations. We'll see you in the next show. Peace.